Do you have your coffee? Are you ready to see what's in this box? Subscribe to the channel now. Oh yeah, there we go. Hopefully everyone had a safe, happy, wonderful Thanksgiving for those of us in the United States that celebrate that holiday. So, before I get onto the Camaro stuff, little update on the uh, headlights. This piece here, not sure if you can see it, might be able to focus it on that. See, it says 9012, right? I believe this was this 9012. This turns out to be the biggest problem. If you go on the catalog and look up a 2017 Chevy Cruze Premier with the projector beam lights, it calls for a 9012. The problem is that 2017 Chevy Cruze Premier with the projectors, when you pull out the headlights, the headlight bulbs on them say 9005. 9005 is the listing in the book for the regular model cruises with two headlights, a low beam and a high beam, two separate beams. So I've contacted Aux Beam, asked them if they could send me the proper piece. Um, might not be. There's a set screw in here, so um, they can take. You can take this piece and interchange it between all the bulbs, which actually works quite good if you own a set of LED lights and maybe you're changing cars. You might just be able to order a piece. I'm not 100% sure, but if that's the case, then yeah, that would work out great. So. Uh, <laughs> Here are the new pieces. Remember I said this is the old knock sensor and I said there's supposed to be a piece of plastic on there. Oh, I don't know why this one is so much bigger. So yeah, the entire plastic melted off of that. And then here is the new pigtail for this. As you can see this uh, round piece, there's a thing in there and they're supposed to go in there and lock like so, like that and be in there that is what's supposed to be there but uh, <laughs> this is what i had so i had to replace that and that have to the, it's really good that the computer knows that the car if there's a knock or detonation and it can back off some timing so we got that um, i got some spark plug wire holders no big deal but i need to keep them from melting onto the headers so Man, y'all ready for this? Here are my new PCV valves. <laughs> I know they're not PCV. There are there's one PCV valve on the driver's side, and then on the other side is a tube that goes straight into the throttle body. So that way it sucks up a bunch of oil. They still do that today. That's why we have catch cans, or for me, I just disconnected it. They find a home for this stuff. All right. I got some fuel line fittings. None of this is very exciting. These are like fittings that I'll need on the new intake manifold to hook up the um, throttle linkage. Yeah, that's it. So none of these parts very exciting. I have a fuel pressure gauge right here for the new regulator. Do have a new Excel super coil to try to give the car some more spark. I need it. Uh, the car's getting. I mean, I don't know. The spark plugs don't look that great as it is anyhow. So uh, I got new spark plugs. These are needed because the cylinder heads that I got call for something different. Here we have a. Uh, come on. A brand new fuel pressure regulator. Nice red matches the car. It's good stuff, people. This is good stuff. I'm a little, little worried about hooking up the fuel pressure regulator though. I have never done like a remote one like this, so it's gonna be new. I don't think it's just there's gonna be fittings, and I have to retrofit those fuel lines that are in the car to fit that. So I'm not 100% sure how it's gonna work. Once I get the intake manifold off, I guess I can figure it out. Got one brand new double roller timing chain figure you're into the engine it's better to be safe than sorry let's just go ahead and replace this so we won't have any problems uh, I got MSD there's an 8.5 inch 8.5 millimeter spark plug wires uh, those are LC AC Delco's I'm not sure how old they are 
like I said, we want to boost the spark. We're making more power. We're going to raise the compression up. So we want to go ahead and get as much as possible. And oh, big piece of resistance here. Brand new rocker arms. Look at that roller tip. Save some of that resistance on there. And here are the matching push rod tubes. So, the only thing I'm lacking right now is the camshaft and lifters, and that's coming out of a different warehouse. I'm not exactly sure when I'll be here. Maybe Monday. Uh, when I get them, I'll let you know. And then uh, I'm getting a new thermostat. I totally forgot to order that. So I'm going to put a 180 in here. I think they're like 195s in the factory. But I know I had a problem with this car running hot. And uh, I live, you know, where we live, it's pretty hot. So I don't want to run a very hot thermostat. I just want to go ahead and have that. So. All right, I think the next step is to go ahead and remove the headers. I only have two bolts holding each one, and then we need to start digging into that engine so we can start getting some of this installed. So the game plan is I'm going to try to get the radiator out right now, and then I'm going to start working on the accessories on the front. I was looking at the instructions for the header, and there's some type of modification that needs to be made to the AC bracket so I want to go ahead and start on that that way when I'm ready to put all this together I can work on that but I want to get all the accessories off the front and then I'm gonna start getting into the engine but I think it's just gonna be easier if I get this stuff off the front so let's work with what we got but in the meantime I want to talk a little bit about trolls unfortunately you know as a creator you're gonna to have to deal with this stuff somebody asked me a question on this car if I want to do a torque converter I was going to do one and you know I told them the answer is I would like to I know that these cars respond well to a torque converter because these torque converters are like locked up right from the get-go they come on very very strong uh, but the problem is First off, as you guys know, I bought this car used, and I have no idea really what the maintenance history was of it. So, that being said, I just have to assume that nobody's been into this transmission with 90,000 miles on it. Okay, so we, I mean, we know that like you can flush your transmission, and basically you should do that per the owner's manual recommendation of the manufacturer, which is probably about 50,000 miles or so on like these older cars. Might have been sooner, Six, we're not even 60, but common consensus is if you haven't done it by that point, don't open the transmission and mess with it because a couple of different things. One, as your clutches, the clutches wear in the transmission, the extra materials in the fluid, and if your clutches are kind of worn out, then, you know, that extra clutch material is giving you some, well, uh, traction kind of say the friction that you needed and then another one is uh, a lot of transmission fluids kind of have cleaning agents in them to keep stuff clean and all that and if you never flushed your transmission and you go and empty it or if you add a bunch of new fluid which a torque converter I don't really remember anymore but it holds quite a bit of fluid uh, if you introduce a whole lot of new fluid to an old transmission, then you could be asking yourself for problems. And I had this guy tell me that that's not true. Uh, that your transmission, if that your transmission is already bad, blah blah blah. Which, in one respect, maybe a little bit. If your clutches are worn and the only thing giving you uh, anything to go, I really do need one. Put my phone on silent when I do this. I guess. Sorry. <laughs> um, but. At the same token, my point is, if that's the case, your transmission's fine and it's driving. It's going at least, right? At least it's moving. So, 
My only main concern is if I go pull this transmission off, throw a torque converter into it, and then the transmission decides to grenade after the fact, not only have I ruined the transmission, I've also ruined the torque converter because now all that dirt and trash is in the torque converter. So it's kind of, it's something that if I do it, I have to be careful. Or if I really want to do it, I might just have to look at just getting more of a performance oriented, tra or just taking this transmission off sending it to a shop and have it built. That would probably be the most likely thing that I would do to really crisp up the shifts and things like that. Have a shift kit put in here and just have the transmission rebuilt. Have everything gone through. It would just, it just, you know, like I said, this guy's trying to uh, be smart and all that. And, you know, it's one of those things you have to deal with. Trying, uh, well, anyhow. So, somehow I thought this thing was going to unbolt. But I guess uh, we have to undo the fans, it looks like. Let's see here. Tell me everything's a 10 or whatever. No, of course not. All right. Very important when you do these things to keep track of everything. I'll probably end up either putting these back where I took them from or putting them in like little Ziploc bags to uh, keep everything marked so I don't lose anything. All right, I'm going to work on this for a while. I'm going to go ahead. I have a GoPro set up right here. You might be able to see it shooting down here, and we're just going to shoot a time lapse. If anything's really interesting, I'll pause and do it. And that's uh, Bob. That's Top Hat. He sends me, like, a whole bunch of messages, like little messages. All right, to the time lapse. Well, I didn't even really get the uh, time lapse started before I ran into a problem trying to get a lower radiator hose out so I can lift this thing and these bolts down here are particularly difficult you can see there's a bracket right here it blocks everything so you can't really get a normal socket in here fortunately I got these pass-through ones from Craftsman they have a very very small profile and it seems to be about the only thing I can get in here right now what a pain in the freaking rear see look at this now even as the bolt comes out it's hitting this this is oh wow imagine I might just have to just take this probably the easiest thing is to take this bolt this bracket off maybe I won't even wear this thing down here imagine it just uh, strengthens the chassis up a little bit because I don't see it actually doing anything Uh, better be my transmission line. Hopefully I get that from the top. I'll be able to do this little radiator hose when I get the fans out of the way. Then I'll be able to reach that. Uh, wish I had some PV blaster to put on that. Oh man, this is why we have a variety of tools. You never know. Oh, I tried to come in here with the universal. If you know what those are. Look how dry this is, man. They redesigned somewhere around this era, somewhere in the 80s, they redesigned the front main and the rear main seals. Used to be a real common problem with them leaking. You see, this engine is pretty dry. Oh, I think I got this one. Oh, hopefully you guys can see it. I can't see what the GoPro is recording, so it's just kind of aimed in the general direction. So I apologize if it misses something. All right, two bolts out, two to go. Where are the wiring for those fans while I'm down here before I realize I get up there? And... Okay, right here. Good God, man. Is there enough room? Probably not. Oh, and they're clipped on and everything. Oh, that goodness, yes. All of that fun stuff, great. Yeah, so just try to get that armor down here. Oh, I didn't even bring anything down here. To... Oh, damn it. Wow, story of my life. Hold on. Oh yeah, I got it out from the top after all. After all that. These fans are different. I do I do believe they are different. 
strongly believe they are. If I leave these bolts right here, I well, shouldn't lose them. I don't know exactly what they're for, because this is where they're at. So right now, this is a little bit of a pain, because this damn wiring is in the way. Wow. Look at that. Now how long that's been broke. Woohoo, man. thing in now is a couple transmission lines and that lower radiator hose. So uh, I got the radiator out of the car, and I think I know why it would overheat a little bit. Uh, this is going to blow your mind. Check this out. Look at all of that. I don't know how all these leaves and stuff get caught up in here. And for those of you that smoke and like to throw your cigarette butts out of the window, don't do that shit. See that right there by the red rag? That right there? Damn, somebody's nasty ass cigarette butt in the friggin' car. Now you could picture uh, that catch the damn car on fire with that stupidity. So don't do that. If you smoke and you, you think, seem to think the streets are your ashtray, don't do that. But look at the. I, I don't understand how in the world it scooped up that many leaves. Holy crap. Well, you can see here. Look at how high up all that is. So yeah, that would probably be why the car would overheat when it was sitting still a little bit. So we'll definitely uh, vacuum all this out and get it cleaned up. But that is just absolutely amazing. I wish you could have seen it when I first took the radiator out and it was still stacked up really high. But somehow the aerodynamics of the car pushes this stuff up. And the red rag fell whenever I took it out. I had it there to catch some antifreeze. But look at that. Holy smokes. Thank you.